like your pasta served with a rich sauce, maybe topped with parmesan. How would you feel if your pasta contained dried insects? Well, more than two billion people around the world do eat insects every day. Many talk about them and the benefits of them as a source of vitamins and protein. Well, Sofia Batitza has been to an insect farm in northern Italy, which produces pasta made from ground bugs. Would you eat cricket pasta? Eating insects is nothing new in parts of the world like Asia. But is there a shift happening in Europe? This farm in northern Italy turns one million crickets into food every day. First, the crickets, still alive, are frozen, boiled, dried, and then pulverized. This is the final result, a cricket-based flour that can be added to food, like pasta, bread, or pancakes. And it's good for the planet. Insects require a fraction of the land and water that is used to produce meat. What we do here is very sustainable. To produce one kilo of cricket powder, we only use about 12 litres of water, whereas producing the same amount of protein from cows requires about 60,000 litres of water. But how does this get on your plate? Some restaurants buy the flour and add it to some of the more traditional dishes, like pasta. Cricket pasta? Yes. Here we go. I'm about to taste cricket tagliatelle. This is really good. It tastes like normal pasta. I would not be able to tell that this is cricket-based flour. It's delicious. And it's a superfood. It's packed with vitamins, fiber, and minerals. One plate of cricket pasta contains as much protein as a steak. But is it a realistic option? There is one problem. It's very expensive. Cricket flour costs about 60 pounds per kilo, way more expensive than a standard bag of pasta, which costs about one pound. That means that for now, insect food is a niche option. The meat I produce is much cheaper than cricket flour, and it's very good quality. It's healthy. I'm absolutely against these new food products. We don't know what they can do to you. A good steak makes you happy. I can't really imagine people eating crickets at restaurants. But a change in attitudes is happening. Belgium, Austria and the Netherlands are the countries that are more open-minded. And with the EU approving foods made from insects, the prices are expected to go down, which means insects could soon become a part of the European diet. Sofia Bettiza, BBC News. We're joined now by Tiziana Di Contant-Stanzo, who runs insect cooking classes to show people how to incorporate bugs into their diet. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, this is slightly different because that pasta is it's ground up and it's put into the flour and into the pasta. So you wouldn't, unless you were told, you wouldn't really know, would you? There's, is there, is there a, dis, a distinct taste that you would... Uh, there is a slight taste to, to, to them, obviously. It depends very much on the quantity you put in. We recommend for pasta maybe a 10% cricket powder and the remaining uh, traditional flour. Um, yeah, uh, also in, you know, in bread and other products, baked goods like that, um, because there's no gluten in the actual powder, you obviously have to mix it with, uh, with regular flour. How long have you been cooking with insects? It's been since 2018. Uh, my son did um, a Duke of Edinburgh project, and so he started farming them as a, as a school project, really. Uh, and then we liked them so much, we had our utility room full of them. Uh, we realized how easy it was to grow your own. Uh, and then from there, uh, it took a couple of years to actually build a proper shed in our back garden. Um, and then uh, we founded Horizon. And uh, so it's been since about 2018. What was the first insect you ate? Uh, it was a mealworm. <laughs> a a mealworm. mealworm. Yeah, mealworms are actually quite tasty. Uh, I don't know why people tend to think of crickets as the sort of the main insect. Um, mealworm, obviously, they look a bit like, more like maggots, so maybe there's that kind of more of a yuck um, instinct that kicks in. But uh, they're actually uh, tasty, a bit like nuts. And these are dried. These. 
Is that dried? Oh. Yeah, these are oven dried. Um, obviously, there's different techniques for drying them, and we found that the flavor will change depending on uh, the drying method. Um, it's a little bit me, so that depending on what you fed them, um, um, the taste is different. They pretty much taste the same. What have you brought in? This is crickets. They've been uh, farmed in the UK and they are simply uh, roasted. Uh, there's nothing added to them and they are um, very uh, tasty, <laughs> we think, anyway. Uh, and not just what, us. What do they taste of? Um, I would say, I mean, people that try them, they say meaty popcorn is one that we, uh, pork scratching is another one that we get a lot. I don't think you should just try one, you should try a few so you get them full flavour. Yeah, even one, I think, would be, would be good. Well, well about Japanese, isn't it? So <laughs> what I'm thinking is that uh, the taste I don't think is very strong at all. Yeah. It's quite, it's really quite a modest flavour. And it's, it's a, um, oh, no, it's not a strong flavour. What is it? Is it nutty or is it? It is a little bit nutty. It's a bit hard mm. to describe really. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, we say, you know, they taste like nothing you've tasted I mean, before. I, I, yeah. I, to be honest, I could quite, Okay. Another one. Just, I could carry on. Um, mm. Yeah, I could. I could eat more. In fact, I will. It's quite <laughs> nice, actually. It is quite nice. So you okay. change recipes then. So if you if you were to have like a bowl of this, what recipe would you use it? In? Yeah. Yes. The main thing is that we are looking at them as a cooking ingredient rather than a snack like you're having now. Um, so you could, for example, just throw a handful in your stir fry. Uh, you know, to add flavour and to add proteins to the stir fry. Um, we grind them into powder, we put them in a pizza base or bread and so on. Uh, with the mealworms, we, we make fritters, for example, with the onion and curry. The one uh, thing so it's, it's a very versatile. I would ask, it is, you know, um, and I'm not sure if you saw the piece, the, the, the film we ran a moment ago, the cost thing came in with a bit of a kicker at the end, saying it was something like 60 times more expensive than other things. Than the flour. It, than the flour. So this little... This little bowl of goodies here, how, how much are we talking about? Yeah, at the moment it is expensive. Um, the reason being that... Give me a ballpark uh, figure. Be okay, cool. per, per kilo we're talking about £60. Pounds. Hold on, so what have I got here? <laughs> I'm not approximate, sure. Approximate, yeah. uh, probably you got a pound or 50 pence worth. Um, obviously the more you buy, the, the, the better the value you get. However, uh, the, the, the issue of price is... Is, is due at the moment due to the high energy costs and also to the fact that um, small farmers like us, I mean, we were producing mealworms and uh, uh, selling them quite cheaply, about £20 a kilo, because you can feed them um, a surplus food from your local food shop, so the cost of the feed is negligible. The cost of the water is nil because they don't drink, you can, you know, they draw the moisture from the vegetables. Um, and then, I mean, there's been a bit of Brexit regulation issues, mm. and therefore we are now having to um, buy them in. Do you know what? As, as time is passing, it tastes a little bit like dried fish now. Slightly fishy kind mm. of flavour. They do look a bit like, I mean, if you think about the shrimp, maybe, yeah, yeah, they, shrimp. yeah mm. the, the actual exoskeleton contains chitin, which is the same substance as a shrimp uh, would mm. have. Tatiana, um, thank you so much. Thank really you. to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for trying them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Matt Tebbert takes over from us at 10 o'clock in the Saturday Kitchen. Go on then. Have you, how do you feel about incorporating, morning, how do you feel about incorporating um, bugs, dried um, insects, into I've your, tried, your I've dishes? Actually, well, I've actually tried it, and they are, um, it's an interesting taste. They're kind of quite fatty. Pork scratching is... is Sort of uh, quite on the money there. I, I lo Charlie, I've never seen you looking more uncomfortable on TV. <laughs> really? Um, you don't watch enough. I was uncomfortable, but I was just giving it... The thing was, it was an authentic... Do you know something? Probably on your program, people taste things immediately. They go, oh, that's lovely. I've just given a bit of time. I was trying to... I was trying to that's right, isn't it? You're, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Just really let really a bit of time. Just let it... I mean, one, one, one thing I do remember is that you know when everyone says, oh, it tastes a bit like chicken, it doesn't taste like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. And when you answer. see them in the, in the raw state as well, before they get oh. dried, that's interesting. Well, that's Reminds you of fish and tackle shops. Anyway, moving on. Uh, we've got no bugs on today's show. Our special guest is the presenter and best-selling author, Anita Raleigh. Anita, welcome. Nice to be here. 
Thanks for coming along. Uh, fresh from Gastonbury. Yes. Fresh. I mean, just straight off the field. <laughs> straight there to here. Um, now we're going to talk about your, your new book. It's coming out in uh, two weeks, That's I believe. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about Food Heaven, Food Heaven for now. What's your idea of Food Heaven? Um, uh, cricket surprise. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. 